Suppose you walk into a room and you see some bodies on the floor. Unfortunately, that person's not sleeping. In this case, what would you do? Okay, this is my favorite example of Newton's law of cooling, and here's the situation. Suppose you are a policeman and you walk into a crime scene at 12 o'clock a.m. and you find out the person has been murdered there. What you can do first is that go ahead and record the temperature and you find out his temperature is at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's still kind of warm, that means he wasn't murdered too long ago. And now you are going to just check the area and luckily, we are in the central heat area, so we are going to assume that the temperature of the surrounding has been a constant well, throughout this time, at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And now, you are going to wait for a little bit, because you know the temperature is going to be dropping down. Well, let's say you waited for another hour and 30 minutes, now it's 1.30 a.m. You are going to record the temperature again. This time you find out his temperature is at 87 Fahrenheit, so it has been dropped, it, right? With all this data, we can actually use Newton's law of cooling to estimate the time of death of the person. And this is how we will do it. So again, for situation question, let's go ahead and put down what we know. So we can collect all the information right here. First, Newton's law of cooling says the rate of change of the temperature of the body with respect to time. I will just put down dt, dt. The capital T is the temperature of the body, and then the little t is the time, of course. This right here is proportional, so I put down equal to k. Proportional to what? Well, it's the difference between the temperature of the body and the temperature of the surrounding, under the assumption that the surrounding temperature has remained to be constant. Well, we are just going to do t minus t with little s, so that will represent the temperature of the surrounding assuming this is a constant throughout this time. And we need to find this difference first, so be sure you put down parentheses for it. Parentheses matters, hashtag. Somebody please start a movement. Thank you. And you may be wondering, okay, how do I know which one to put on first? The truth is, it doesn't matter, because we have the K all the way in the front to help us out. So this right here would be the good setup. Sometimes this is also referred to as the Newton's law of warming, because, for example, if you take out like a ice cold Coca Cola from the fridge and then put it on the desk, then it's like 80 degree, and of course the Coke is going to get you know, warmer and warmer. So that will be the Newton's law of cooling. But in this case, the temperature is dropping down. That's why it's the Newton's law of cooling. So anyway, this is the differential equation, and now we are going to write down our initial conditions. First one, T of zero. I will just say this is the initial temperature. Right, the temperature of the body when we find the body. So I will just tell you this is at 12 o'clock a.m., right? And it was 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we waited for an hour and 30 minutes. And you can use minutes or you can use hours, up to you. I will just put on T of 1.5 because this will be representing at 1.30 a.m. And the temperature of the body has been dropped to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And the surrounding temperature was assumed to be constant at 82 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So this is pretty much all the information, and this is what we want. You're going to think about it. Well, how come the temperature of the body has been like, dropping? because the person is dead, unfortunately, right? So here's the deal. The moment that the person has been murdered, his temperature is going to be dropping down. And usually, the, body normal, the normal body temperature of human being is at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we want the time, we want T, so that the temperature at that time was still at the normal body temperature, which is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. So that's the idea, right? Now let's just go ahead and solve this differential equation and then we can you know, try to solve this question and all that stuff. So here we go. First of all, this right here, let me just write it down again. This is dt, dt equals k times t minus 82. And then you see we have the t here and then the t here, capital T for the temperature. 
So let me multiply d little t on both sides, and I'll divide this on both sides. So we get 1 over t minus 82, d capital T being equal to k times d little t like this. And then, of course, from here, we're just going to integrate both sides. Now, when we have to integrate 1 over t to the first power minus 82, this right here will give us natural log absolute value of t minus 82. We don't have to divide anything or do anything crazy because the derivative of t minus 82 is just 1. So you don't have to divide anything right here. Right? So that's nice. This is equal to kt because integrating k in the t word, you get kt. And you are going to start put down the constant plus t1. You didn't need to put down a plus constant here because you can just merge the constant together on the right-hand side like this. Now, I will just do e to this power and e to this power so I can cancel out the e and then the ln. On the left-hand side, we have the absolute value of t minus 82. And this is equal to, well, remember, both of them are being adding and they are the exponent. So I will first do e to the kt like this. And then we multiply by e to the c1, like this. And yes, because c1 is a constant and e is a constant, you are going to write this as c2. But check this out. I also have to get rid of the absolute value. How? Well, you literally just get rid of it. Get rid of this, get rid of that. But don't forget to put down a plus minus on the right-hand side. So you'll see t minus 82, and this is equal to all these things right here. We're just going to put it together as another constant, namely c2, right? Plus minus the constant is still a constant, so altogether we'll just merge it into a constant. And then just keep track of your constant. That's pretty much it. And in the end, of course, to isolate the capital T, let's just add uh, 82 on both sides. So the temperature as a function of time is equal to 82 plus, well, I'm done. So I'll just write the C2 as C, and then we have the E, K, T, like this. So this will be the general solution to this differential equation. And now I'll be using this right here to help us solve for the C, and I'll be using this to help us to solve for the K. So here we go. From here, T of 0, we know this is 90. This means when you will put down 0 into the t here, the whole thing should be 90. So we'll make this equal to 82 plus c, e, k, we don't know yet, but the t is 0, like this. And you can see that this is just 90 equal to 82 plus this is 0, e to 0 is 1, so we have c. So all in all, c is just subtract 82 on both sides, we get 8. And now, we'll be using this right here to help us to solve for the k. t at 1.5. Again, this is one hour and one and a half hour later, so 130, of course. This right here is at 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we are going to put in 1.5 into this t, and then in the meantime, we know c is equal to 8. So we'll put this two c in. So this is equal to 82 plus c is 8 now, and then e is still e, k we don't know, and the t is 1.5. So we just put on 1.5 right here. Now look at this equation. We will minus 82 on both sides, so we get 5. It's equal to 8, e to the 1.5k, and then divide both sides by 5, and you know this is going to be e to the 1.5k equal to 5 over 8. And then we can, of course, take the natural log on both sides, right? Cancel this out. And then you will end up with 1.5k equal to this. We will have to divide both sides by 1.5. So we get k being equal to 1 over 1.5 times ln of 5 over 8, like this. And of course, we're going to use a calculator to do approximation. If you would like, you can also just keep this as how it is and then plug into that, but approximation is, works cleaner in this case. 
And here I'll just tell you guys what the answer is. This right here is approximately negative 0 0.3133 for the k value. And now we can just take this and that and put it back to this, and we can get the temperature function. So we know T of T is equal to 82 plus C is the 8, right? 8 is the C. And then we have E, and then the K is this, which is negative 0 0.3133 T, and we are going to set this to be the normal body temperature, namely 98.6 right here, right? And now we're just going to solve this equation, right? The T is right here, so let's go ahead and get to work. So that's of course minus 82 on both sides, so we get this part, 8 e to the negative 0 0.3133 T equal to this minus that, which is 16.6. .6. And next, we are going to get the T by itself, and this is how we can do it. Check this out. Starting at 16.6, .6, we have to divide both sides by 8. And then we have to get rid of the e by doing natural log, right? So just put on ln right here. And then we will have this part left. I will have to divide both sides by this. So I'll just put down 1 over negative 0 0.3133. And then you put everything onto your calculator. t, let me tell you, is approximately negative 2.33, like this. All right? So now, what does this mean though? Well remember, before you get into the crime scene, the person was killed. You just have to figure out how long ago did that happen, right? You arrived at the crime scene at 12 o'clock, and apparently this happened 2 hours and 20 minutes ago. Why did I say 20? Because this is a third of an hour, right? This is about a third of an hour. So you just are going to do some math, so I will just write this down right here. Again, the negative represents before the 12 o'clock a.m. So I would just say 2 hours and a third of the hour, which is 20 minutes before you got to the crime scene, so before 12 a.m. So again, this is one third of an hour, so that's why it's 20 minutes and all that. So in the end, just subtract. 12 minus 2 and then minus another 20, so you end up with 9.40 p.m. So I will just tell you guys the death time of that person, so you can write your police report and all that stuff, right? So 9.40 p.m. approximately speaking, of course. So this is it. Hopefully you guys all like this video. If you do, please give me a like and also make sure to subscribe for more math-related content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, that's it.